Hello, everyone, and welcome. Thank you all so much for joining us today for this live stream event. My name is Alexia, and I am the program manager of the Microsoft Reactor Toronto. I will be sharing session resources with you in the chat. But before we begin, I'd like to quickly review two items, our code of conduct and event guidelines. First, please take a moment to review our code of conduct. Microsoft Reactor seeks to provide a respectful environment for both our audience and presenters. Um, we encourage engagement in the chat, but please be mindful of your commentary, remain professional and on topic. And secondly, our event guidelines. This session is being recorded and will be available on demand through the Microsoft Reactor YouTube channel in about 24 to 48 hours. I will be sharing the link in the chat for our YouTube channel. And if you've not been on a live stream to YouTube before, please note that you must create an account on YouTube in order to access and interact in the chat. You can set that up now. And if you're unable to use the chat but have questions, feel free to reach out to us through social media. Which brings us to today's session. I'm going to bring in our speakers here, Bruno and Sravani. Hello, hello. Hello, everyone. Hey, everyone. We're excited, We're excited for the last session of the series. Uh, please take it away. Sure. So, hey, hello, everyone. Happy to be with you here. I start to see people joining from decent places. I'm going to show when I am managing the tab. So, Rajiv from Nepal. We are from Canada. Is, I am going to kill your name, so sorry. Sinichi from Japan, the, everyone there. So thanks a lot. Hello. And hey, we are going to close today the sessions talking about OpenAI and Power and power Apps and Power Platform, sorry. And today we are going to talk with, about Power Virtual Agent, which is super cool. And I am looking forward for this one because a lot, of, a lot happened in the last couple of weeks. And I really, really want to see what else we have here. So, Ravani, do should we start? Can you move to the next uh, slide so we talk a little about the content and then uh, what we are going to see? Similar to the previous sessions, we are going to make a quick intro to uh, to what are the power Beta agents, talk a little about OpenAI, the APIs, what we have here and there, and then what we have in Power Virtual Agent, which basically was new for me when Ravani showed me this and blow my mind. This is so, so cool. So I think we are starting. Ravani, do you want to please introduce yourself and we can start talking about Power Virtual Agent? Yeah, uh, thanks for having me again, Bruno. This is very exciting. I'm seeing a lot of people join from across the world. Uh, so welcome, everyone. My name is Ravani Siti. I'm a Cloud Solution Architect at Microsoft. I specialize in Power Platform and it's very dear and dear to me. Uh, so without uh, further uh, ado, we'll jump into the topic. I'll start off with a very brief introduction to the platform. Uh, this is the third uh, of the series, so you might have already seen this, uh, but just a very brief overview. Um, Power Platform has five main pillars. Uh, Power Apps for application development, Power Automate for workflow automation, Power BI has been the oldest pillar for business analytics. Power Virtual Agents, today's uh, star of the show for building chatbots and Power Pages for website development. Um, so we'll jump into Power Virtual Agents. Uh, lots of new announcements, uh, both with uh, the AI um, features as well as um, lots of uh, other features as well. So I'll briefly touch upon those uh, other features as well before jumping into the OpenAI integration with uh, Power Virtual Agents. So if you haven't heard of this product before, it's a low-code uh, product, uh, part of the Power Platform, and useful for building chatbots uh, for your end users. This is very closely associated and built on top of Azure Bot Service. Uh, so if you're a pro developer and you have used Azure Bot Service uh, uh, previously, this is essentially an extension of that service. Um, again, it's a low-code, no-code um, platform, so you don't really need to have any IT background to build these chatbots. Uh, it can be very interactive based on your business logic. Um, and as I said, it's built on top of Azure Bot Service. The latest announcement which leads me to this uh, sort of an array of announcements is uh, the 
coding side-by-side -side feature uh, that uh, provides a unified uh, authoring canvas between Power Virtual Agents and Azure Bot Service. In the past, Azure Bot Service was code heavy, so you would see the code behind uh, your chatbot, but now in Power Virtual Agents, you can switch between code view and your uh, normal low-code uh, graphical view, uh, if you might add. So with that, again, uh, that changes a lot of things. You can now copy paste your code uh, so you don't have to recreate multiple topics, nodes, etc. cetera. Uh, there's also new features such as adaptive cards, images, videos, quick replies that you can add as rich responses. PowerFX is the language that started in Power Apps primarily. Uh, to write very Excel-like formulas, but now it's coming into Power Virtual Agents as well, uh, which just, you know, empowers all the business users to write complex logic, but still be in the low-code side. There's also other um, features that we'll discuss throughout the session, uh, but these are all uh, the latest announcements in Power Virtual Agents, and this one is one of my favorite announcements. You can now embed your chatbots into your Canvas Power Apps uh, very easily, just uh, as a control even. So this is a brief uh, overview and a short demo uh, in that GIF uh, that's playing on your slide, uh, how to embed those chatbots into your Power Apps. But this opens a, you know, a whole new plethora of uh, use cases where you can add your chatbots into your Power Apps. Uh, now, there is a, a conversa conversation booster uh, announcement included uh, in this slide, which we'll dig into uh, very shortly. But before that, uh, Bruno, I'll pass it over to you to speak about uh, OpenAI and what it is, uh, what are what is all this excitement behind it. I'm on mute, but I learned third time. I already learned to unmute myself. So, hey, thanks. And before starting with Power, I'm sorry, with OpenAI and Azure OpenAI services, uh, we have a question from Ed about roadmap. Right now, if this is in preview, do you know the dates? Do we have any kind of high overview of the dates or still probably preview? So all the OpenAI features in Power Virtual Agents are in preview uh, and only limited to the US region. Uh, so if you have a tenant set up in the US region with your work account, uh, again, not with Microsoft personal accounts, uh, but if you have a work account set up in the US region and you're building a bot uh, that lives in the US region and uh, published in English, these features that we're going to talk about are available. But uh, there, there's no uh, set dates on when it's going in general availability uh, across other regions. So uh, I'll let the product team answer that question. Yes. And hey, I think I know this one because we talked about this last time about licensing and cost, but you are the expert. <laughs> Can you share what we share? I think it was last time about this because we are using premium components and different yeah. things. Uh, so licensing is a very sensitive topic in Power Platform with the wide range of uh, options available. Uh, is there any costing involved to add the chatbot in Power Apps? Currently in preview, there's not. Um, it, it follows your regular you know, chatbot uh, licensing and your Power Apps licensing. Uh, combined, they don't have any additional requirements in preview phase but I cannot promise that after it goes to general availability. Yes, we will take a look in the future. And hey, even here, I am not going to do the full intro to ChatGPT. I will assume that everybody kind of knows what is ChatGPT, this amazing large language model, which is rocking the internet right now. But can you move to the next slide, please? But what is really cool here is that behind uh, ChatGPT, it's OpenAI. OpenAI is an amazing company that creates AI models, and we have a great, great relationship with them. We, are, we invest a lot of money with them. We are basically collaborating a lot. And the main idea that we can see the work that they are doing is working with three 
type of different models. Can you move to the next slide? So we have one model, which is the GPT-3, now GPT-3.5 in chat GPT public, or GPT-4, which was announced last week or two weeks ago. I can't remember. It's literally 10 days ago. And it's kind of an evolved version of this. But the GPT models are mostly designed to work with language. They were mostly designed to understand text. GPT-4 is a different story. We are going to do something with GPT-4 sessions in the future. Then we have other type of AI models to work with coding, we work with programming code, where you can give something. Like in example here, you give the, the structure of a table, and you ask this model generate a query to get all of the customer from Texas that are named Jane and generate this. Or you can also ask the model to explain the code. You pass some code and say, explain this Python code, and the JavaScript code, this kind of thing. And the third kind of model is the image ones, the one that can generate image, can modify an image, update an image, and these kind of things. We have these models available in OpenAI to use using OpenAI APIs, public HTTP endpoints that we can use. Take a look at the sessions one or two when we show how you can do this with Power Automate. We have these models also available in Azure, Azure OpenAI services, where if you already have an Azure subscription, if you're already working with Azure, everything that you know about Azure, regions, security, data, and more, you can basically plug this layer of AI models to use there. And now we have these models, the power of these models also embed as part of core features in the Power Platform tools. We already talked about Power Automate, we already talked about Power Apps, and hey, today it's about Power Virtual Agent. So can, do you want to share with us, Ravani, the, the ones that we have right now? I, I, by the way, yes, I always forget about, no, no, no problem. We have a great partnership with this. Feel free to read how we are working together what the stuff that we are doing, this is great. This is changing a lot. We are talking a lot about the stuff that we are doing. Even Copilot from Microsoft 365 that announced last week or two weeks ago. I really can't remember. Mind. But hey, focus on power utilization. Let's back here. Sorry, it's Romani. All right. So uh, before uh, going to power virtual agent specifically, the two features that I wanted to talk about uh, is going to be the conversation boosters. Uh, that was announced earlier this month. And the second one is the co-pilot, which is, again, adding to uh, the huge list of co-pilots that Microsoft had recently announced. So this has been the timeline so far. Uh, so without uh, uh, going uh, too deep into the other products, uh, the first one here is boosted conversations in Power Virtual Agents. Uh, now, this is based uh, on um, so if you've built Power Virtual Agents chatbot before, you would know that uh, you need to create topics. So when you create a topic, you're essentially giving the chatbot a business logic, saying, you know, if a user asks this question and responds with this option or answer, then ask the, the next question accordingly. Now, to cut that development period short, uh, this feature will help you because now you can point the chatbot to a web address. And essentially what's happening behind the scenes is your uh, chatbot is using Bing search and uh, it's creating the results using GPT. So now when a user asks a question and if your topics are not, uh, you know, equipped enough to give the answer back to the user, your chatbot is going to look through the web address that you have provided, and it's going to create a natural language response back to the user. So it's not going to be just, you know, um, cut and paste from the website directly. It's going to convert it into natural language and then present it to the user. Uh, so Bruno, do, do you want to add an example to this and uh, show how it works? Yes, because I'm sorry, I was checking a couple of questions here. Uh, we talked about this last time. Uh, Emmanuel asked how we can get these features, the GPT and AI features in other platform tool, power platform tools. So as I said, we talked last week and two weeks ago about this. Uh, it's on preview. You need to apply. And please, Ravani, correct me if I'm wrong. You need to apply and you need to share the data of your environment, the use cases that they want to do. 
And I'm not sure how the approval process works, but you are going to be in a queue and you are going to be... So right now it's kind of on demand, it's kind of applying for this and important as Ravani mentioned, it's only available in the US right now, uh, these, these features. That said, let's go back here because when I first see this, I really, really like it. So let me go and share my screen and let me show what was my idea. So share screen, sorry, I lost it before. So, and um, by the way, I usually look like this to get my <laughs> my second screen. Now I am looking into, into this one because I changed monitor some hardware problems. But hey, this is power virtualization. This is the, the environment that we have to, to play around. And I was thinking, okay, I'm going to create a new chatbot. You can see here that we have, oh, sorry. Uh, where is my zoom it? Sorry, there it is. So you can see here that we have the two experience, we have the bit resolution and the preview with the unified, unified canvas. Sorry, I'm going to say this bad. But what I really like about this is I was thinking, okay, maybe I can create a bot. And because we work with the reactor, I will do Microsoft reactor. Home. This is the main site that we have to basically query. And this is where we host all of our events, all of our live streams, in-person activities, everything here. And I will add a bot, and we are going to work with this later. Let me go back to my bot. So I'm going to name my bot Reactor Demo Bot. Sorry about that. And I will add my website. And as far as I understand, at this moment, when I do this, I can define, as we did before in the Power Retail Agent, my topics, my entities, integration, and more. But if something is not recognized as a topic, it's going to try to search into this website and using GPT, get understanding of the question and translate the, the, the response in a natural language. Right. So let's give it a try. It's take a couple of seconds slash minutes to, to create the bot. And I am not going to add any topic. I am, I think by default we have five or six topics running. We have the hello, the transfer to agents, the greeting, and a couple of more. So I am going to try to not say not working on that one, ask a question that will go directly to the <coughs> to the main page. Of course, because this is a demo moment, it's taking a lot of time. <laughs> Usually it's faster, but hey, let's wait for it. I am in the right way, Romani? Yeah, yeah, you got it. Perfect. Hey, I like it. This is learning and testing on the fly. So right now it's creating the bot. So that's why I don't have the, the test bot or the topics available. It's take some time. It's going to refresh a couple of times. Refresh is here. And as I said, I didn't have any topic here, but I have the chance to test my bot. I have my main topics here, which is goodbye, greeting, lesson one, two, and three kind of sample topics. But if I ask a question about, I don't know, what are the... Power apps. Let's see if we have power apps or power agent. Please. Question to this is my question right now. What are the next items of Power Virtual Agent? This question to trigger the GPT model, go into the BEX, the website, and hey, this is kind of nice. I didn't connect my bot, I didn't do any topic, but right now it basically found and helped me also that hey, there is an event that is going to run six weeks from 12 to 1. Basically, more information here, and this is the event. And if I click here, of course, I am going to have, oh, my friend, Julia, Stefano, they are going to run. I, I think the link is not the, the, the good one, but hey, this is, oh, this is part of the series. That's great. So this is the one that we have. And hey, we also have the chance also to rate this. Remember, this is all in preview. It's super important to understand that we are working to make this the best experience ever. So please let us know when something is working or not working to see how it works. So let me write this. Is, ah, this is the right info information, but not the right link. So working there. So, hey, this is super cool. I can even change this to work directly with Bing.com. So I'm going to have my own 
being chat here, can you my chat GPT embedded in my bot? That's correct, mm -hmm. yes? You are on mute? No, no. Oh, sorry. Sorry, bro. No, no, I, I was saying that, hey, this is kind of the, 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 the right place, but the, the right uh, direction, but can we, do you want, do you know if we can test this with a non-Microsoft website? Because yes, I know that if we do Learn or Bing or yeah. these other scenarios, it sounds like, okay, it's all prepared, but do we want to create one with a non-Microsoft website? Yeah, yeah, sure. Uh, let me share my screen back. Okay. Uh, Your screen is back. No, there it is. It's okay, perfect. Slides. Uh, and before uh, going into the demo, uh, there's a question from Vikram, if we can add more than one source of URL to the uh, chat box. Oh, perfect. Yes. Um, very good question. Uh, this preview is currently limited to one URL and also to public URLs. But in the future, they're looking at exposing internal URLs as well as multiple URLs as well. So. For the preview, uh, it's going to start off with just one at the moment. All right. So um, uh, we saw Bruno uh, take us through the chatbot for um, the Reactor website. Uh, I do have one chatbot that I set up with learn.microsoft.com. Um, so when this loads, uh, I'll show you a quick demo of that. Yes, and, and okay. please remember that this is all in preview, so it's slow. Even the page sometimes has some problems here and there, maybe, but it's kind of working. I like it. Yeah. Um, also, if you're looking at the dark mode uh, for the first time, this is fairly new. So if you want to try out the dark mode, uh, it's right here in your settings. Oh, um, that's good. Hey, let us know if someone prefer lights more, that more. What is your preference? I didn't even realize this is cool. Yes. Yeah. Um, so this chatbot, uh, currently, if you look at the settings uh, and go to the AI capabilities, here's where I have my URL to learn.microsoft.com. And you'll see a lot of features here. Um, you can also set up a bot content moderation. Currently, I've set it up to just the default high, where the bot generates fewer answers, but it's more accurate and to the point. But if you want to go towards a lower uh, accuracy and more answers, you can set that as well. Uh, there's more documentation here if you want to look at that setting. Uh, but here, just for a test, I'm going to ask, what is Power Apps? And currently, I don't have any topics that would answer this question, but it uh, got the answer from the Learn documents. And you'll see that every time it generates an answer from the website that you have provided, it's going to say that it's surfaced with Azure OpenAI, and that's the technology behind it. Yeah, Bruno? Yes, can you zoom a little? Uh, in the yeah. page, so it's yeah. oh perfect. Yes, that's. When I, I think it's going to be better to read. Perfect. Yes. Yeah. Thanks. Right. Uh, yeah. Right. So, um, and if you're new to Power Virtual Agents, just know that uh, you have your chatbots. So you build your chatbots in an environment, and within a chatbot. Uh, you can enable and disable the uh, topics that you want the chatbot to refer from. So in this case, uh, if I open a chatbot, I go to topics. That's where Bruno was showing us all the default topics that come out of the box. And you can turn on or off all of these topics based on your requirements. So we'll try a new chatbot um, with the unified canvas. Uh, and I'm going to create a chatbot for this very cool uh, mochi donut place. Uh, it's a local um, business here in Toronto. So I'm going to put that website here. Sorry, I'm going to name my bot first. So that was mochi donuts. 
and my website is here. Okay, so if I hit on create, it's going to create the bot. Um, and if you look at the website while it's creating the bot, uh, there's a few information um, on the website, just a brief description of what it is. Uh, in the menu, there's a lot of different flavors of donuts they have. Um, and in the contact us section, there's a form, but there's also the locations they're available at. So let's see if our bot is ready. It's coming up. All right. So almost there. Um, once it's ready for us to test, we'll go ahead and see uh, if it's providing us the information back. Yes. Uh, while it's creating, back. if you want, Robani, I know it's oh, literally there, yeah. but. There is a cool question for Brickram here that he asked if we have a if there is a way for the bot to access a URL that have some kind of credential control access control. Uh, I don't think we have it right now. Yeah, that's not right now. Correct. So in the uh, preview, I, that's yes, just sorry. coming out. It's just going to be publicly available URLs, uh, no authentication involved. But in the future, they're going to add in these internal URLs, uh, URLs with authentication involved, uh, you know, multiple URLs for a single bot. All of these features will come in the future. Yes, and because so also that's a super are. common scenario, I will mm -hmm. basically guess that that will be covered. Not right now, but for sure in the future. Sorry, Sorry. Yeah. go back to you. I want right. to ask questions. Uh, about <laughs> The donuts are making me hungry, but uh, uh, I'm going to ask if they have a very common flavor that's uh, maple glazed donuts. Uh, I spelled it wrong. Let's see if it did understand what I meant. Uh, so it says, yes, we do have maple glazed donuts, uh, and it shows me the flavors link uh, to their website. So uh, the Point I was making about how it goes through the website to generate this response, but not just you know simple copy paste of the response. It makes it personal and converts it into natural language and then presents it to the user. So that's an important point here. Um, so we'll go into the next topic that we have. Uh, boost conversations is one uh, and the second one, the more exciting one, is the copilot. Um, you have seen a lot of copilot announcements this whole month and even year. I would say there's copilot in GitHub, Power Apps, Power Automate, now in Outlook, Teams, OneDrive, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But uh, keep in mind that the word that Microsoft is focusing on is copilot and not autopilot, right? So it's not here to replace people. It's here to enable people to, uh, you know, create uh, even better uh, in lesser time and increase your productivity. So in Power Virtual Agents, your co-pilot is going to help you in a few different things. Uh, first thing is topic creation. And if you want to edit the topic later, you can do so. Uh, there's response generation, adaptive cards, as I've uh, said before, those are coming into chatbots now. Uh, so if you have um, a need for, you know, responding with an adaptive card, but you haven't built it before, your co-pilot can help you build that adaptive card. Similarly, again, there's a lot of different things your co-pilot can do. And we'll shortly see a demo as well. But essentially, with Azure bots, it used to take months to build a bot. Uh, with our virtual agents, our business users came into the play. And now bots are just taking a few days for a few weeks to author. And with this co-pilot, we are hoping to reduce that time even further so you can build more. So with that. Uh, I'll show a very quick demo of how this topic works. So um, essentially, these are the topics that come out of the box, but I'm going to create a new topic. And uh, here I have the option to create with Copilot. So uh, it's a little 
to dark. Uh, I'm going to switch to a light mode uh, just for this demo and then show it so that uh, it's much clearer. Right. So new topic, create with Copilot. Uh, I'm going to create a topic for rating. So here you're going to put in a natural language sentence so that uh, the co-pilot would un understand what you're trying to build and uh, help you build that topic out. So I'm going to say, let a user rate Isabella's mochi donuts between one and five and ask for their contact information. Right, so let's see uh, how this copilot does. So essentially, I want the uh, topic to ask the user a question on uh, how much they would rate uh, this Isabella's mochi donuts between one and five, and then ask them some contact information so that uh, I can get back to my user. So essentially, it's done uh, everything that I wanted to do. So the trigger phases are already built out. And then the question here is, how would you rate Isabella's Mochi Donuts? And you have the five options here between one and five. And then it's asking for the user's name, email address, and it's thanking the user for rating the Isabella's uh, Donuts. One, one question, Ravani. Can you zoom a little in the trigger phrases? Because it was generated basically from your request, from your question. Uh, hey, I like it. And this is the important part in example. I am not, and I am going to play my not English speaker here. My English is my second language. Uh, and hey, it will take me some time to basically generate this variation of give me a rating, give a rating, what do you think, share your opinion. It saves time. It saves a lot of time. How good is the quality? Ah, it's amazing. It generates almost 10 different trigger phrases. Yes, 10 mm -hmm. different trigger phrases, which is super cool. Really super cool. And it all makes sense also. Also, yeah. I like how it automatically generates the full flow. So also yeah. the question, give a, a rate and then some personal email, uh, personal info, like name, email, the basic ABC. If someone else wants to add more information here, like request for a phone number, that would be great. Or on the other side, if you don't want to request, if you want to make this anonymous because not collecting data, it's always also a good approach, remove these two and that's it. But I love it from a very single sentence. You have trigger phrases, a question, Get and a couple of other a couple of other steps there, which is super super cool. I, exactly. I like it. So this is the copilot for creating the topic, but essentially you can uh, highlight one of these nodes and you can edit it with the copilot as well. So if I wanted to say uh, end the conversation with a thank you note and user info in an adaptive card. Let's see if it can do that. Uh, I just want to send uh, you know, a thank you note uh, in an adaptive card so that I can customize it and um, make it look a little bit more fancy than a plain message. So this is what an adaptive card would look like. It has added the right adaptive card where I wanted it to add. And here in the adaptive card formula, you can see what all uh, information is going out. So it's going to have, um, thank you for a feedback as a header, and then the name of the user and email address that they've provided in the previous steps. So this is your adaptive card that will show up in your end user's response. Um, let me save this. Maybe not. But uh, I, one thing I did want to show is the code view as well. That's one topic we've uh, discussed um, before jumping into the OpenAI discussion. 
So if you wanted to look at the code behind um, your topic, you can switch to the code editor. This essentially gives you the Azure bot service type of interface where uh, if you're a pro developer and you are more used to the YAML code behind chatbots, uh, this is an easy view for you. And you can switch back to the graphical interface uh, if you're a business user or, or either or. So it, it depends on your personal choice. Uh, you can have the code, code view or this graphical view as you wish. There's also another feature for comments. Uh, so let's say I wanted to tag my other developer. Um, let's say I have a test user. Uh, I can say, can you add a picture response as well? And th what this does is essentially, um, okay, I, I need to share the bot with the other user, but essentially what this does is uh, how you would comment within your PowerPoint, uh, your, within your OneDrive, et cetera. Once you post this comment, it's going to send an email notification to your other developers. So collaboration is much more easier between um, your team. Uh, so that feature uh, also has recently come out. So if you haven't tried out, please do. Um, but yeah, that's uh, that's all about Copilot. Uh, and you've seen a couple of features here on how to generate a topic and also how to edit your topic uh, on the floor as well. All I did here is type in two natural language sentences and I have a fully functioning topic that I wanted uh, my chatbot to refer to. So, hey, this is, yeah. Yes, this is super cool. <laughs> Literally a time saver because yeah. if I need to do this, I think I can do the topics, the questions, that adaptive cards, I am very bad. I just copy and paste there. I try to design my own and they were very, very bad. But hey, it seems that here I will save a lot, a lot of time. And exactly. before moving forward, we, this is not going to be as long as the other session, but there are two questions that I think that we want to we want to tackle before, before closing, which is Andy's asking about how organizations can implement chat GPT for internal information search in different ways. And other, the other question is around, Dave is asking about OpenAI and Azure OpenAI services. So a couple of things there. Uh, OpenAI has a set of APIs, has a set of uh, features that we can use from them. So if you want to use, uh, I don't know, a GPT 3.5 model, there is an endpoint, an API that you can call. And this is going to use uh, OpenAI uh, endpoint. However, however, we also have, let me go back to my screen. We also have these features available. Uh, to screen, this is fine. Yes. And we also have these features available as an Azure server, a service. So they are in preview right now, but you can apply and you have access to several models that we have in uh, in Azure. So that means that you will also have an endpoint to run in Azure using these GPT models, these OpenAI models. One of the key differences here is, in example, if you already have, if you're already using Azure and you have your subscription, you have a model and you have a governance there, you can add this to the current model. So at the end of the month, you are going to have one inbox, the Azure inbox, and you can see where are you spending your money. This is something that you can take advantage. Other advantage, we just talk about security and connections here and there. Everything that we know, when I here have a model, in example, I have several models, I have code, DaVinci, GPT 3.5, DaVinci 2 and 3, text embedding. When we have these models available, so when we want to use it in Azure, we can add a custom layer. I can add a customized model here. I can pick up one of the base models that I have, it's not transfer learning, but kind of adapt this model to my data and I am going to have this basically customized to my information. Uh, when you talk about searching using, in, I'm sorry, training and asking questions using internal information to these models, Azure OpenAI will give you the data security, will give you all of the key points that we have in Azure 
to manage this. So big difference there uh, about how both scenarios work. At the end, I'm not sure, but I will say they are literally the same model. I think they are the same GPT 3.5 example model. I think so. Maybe wrong there. But in Azure, we have everything that we already know in Azure. So someone was talking about connecting these to Azure Share, uh, Share Search. I'm sorry. I see an amazing demo, someone doing this also with Cosmos DB. And hey, literally no connection there because it's all on the Azure side. So I hope this, this clarify a little there about how we can how we can do this. Uh, and the main difference. And the other ones were around, sorry, power virtual agents. And if they can do this kind of things for internal uh, internal search in a, in a company. As we said before, right now it's in public preview. Right now it's mostly to show which the, where is the direction that the product is, is going to have this amazing canvas copilot that help you edit and create the stuff using natural language, also to edit this using natural language, to have this URL single right now, maybe with more in the future, to help your bot become more intelligent. But I'm sure that for more complex business scenarios, including authentication, someone ask about authentication, someone in turn accents in internal notification, eventually will go, I will, I will say that I will, my guess is that we are going to get there. I don't know when, right now it's showing the capabilities, but we are going to, to, to go there. So that said, I don't know, do we have anything else, uh, Srobani? I think uh, we are almost you, here. Uh, if you want to share my screen back, um, I quickly wanted to show just one more thing. Okay, perfect. Um, so we were um, we were looking at this topic that the copilot built for us, uh, and I was just doing a quick test here. So one of my trigger phases was rating Isabella's donuts. So the next question it's asking me is how I'm going to rate the uh, experience. So if I say let's say four. Uh, it's going to ask me for my email, which is the next question here. Actually, it skipped my name, but uh, let's see. And that's the adaptive card that it built out for me. Uh, and the reason why I'm showing this adaptive card is um, th this is a code a uh, heavy feature, I would say, if you're not used to building adaptive cards and if you're not used to JSON objects at first, but um, you always have uh, the option to go to ChatGPT and ask what it needs to do for you, right? So uh, that's my plug into ChatGPT and uh, how you can make the best of it. I think we showed a couple of examples in Power Automate and apps as well. Uh, but essentially, it's there to help you out. You don't have to search for several blogs or, uh, you know, learn documents, etc. But just ask ChatGPT and it'll generate the adaptive card for you if you're not uh, well versed with it. That's super cool. And I didn't even think about getting... <laughs> Go into ChatGPT to help me create my adaptive cards. Hey, I will give this a try. We were literally using yesterday in a session ChatGPT to help us fly a drone. I will switch back to the Power Platform and I will start to do these kind of things. This is amazing. This is super, yeah. super cool. And hey, before we, we close, because we are already almost at the end, let me find the link. If you have a couple of seconds, please give, share a feedback with us. There you can find the, the survey. It's aki.sms slash reactor slash survey. Our event code is 18596. And we really, really uh, want to know more. We really want to see how, if you like it, not like it, if you want to do something else when GPT-4 is a kind of move to a more public preview state. And as usual, also ask everyone to follow us on YouTube, follow, uh, follow, contact us in any social media we have presence here and there. And hey, we are at the end. I see more questions here. Uh, be back saying, thanks, thanks for Mr. Rabani. No, it's a pleasure. <laughs> I, I, I really, really enjoy uh, this, uh, these kind of things. 
we I know there are more questions. I want to be, try to be sensitive with time and keep it kind of close to this. So, so Vani, thanks a lot. Thanks for all the help in this series. We're probably going to do something similar in the future because there are so many new things here. And uh, that's it for today. And we may face something else for the future. I don't know. So Vani, something else to, to close the, the session? No, uh, thank you so much again for joining from so many different places. Uh, I, I know the timing might be a little off for some regions, but uh, thank you so much for joining. And I personally enjoyed this session. Uh, like Bruno said, give us some feedback. Uh, let us know what you want to see. Uh, we'll uh, do another session based on the feedback again. But good to be here. Thank you so much for having me, Bruno. Okay, perfect. Goodbye, everyone. Have a great start of the week.